howdy there, cowpokes, and welcome back to another episode of 10 Details You Probably Didn't Know or That You Missed in Red Dead Redemption 2. So firstly, in classic western fashion, you can find somebody, usually on the trail or even at camp, playing on the jaw harp. Okay there? Damn fool. Beautiful bit of country, huh? Do you want to die today? Huh? So why are you ruining it? Shit! Ah. Please, God! No! Secondly, if you're out riding and you pass through a graveyard, you can actually see sometimes one or two people mourning near a gravesite for a loved one. Hey there, miss. You keep safe now. It can be a nasty world. Goodbye. The next two details are some of my favorite on this list, and firstly, if you enter into a bar, you can usually find an almond bowl on top of the counter that you can use freely, just like in some bars in real life, although I wouldn't recommend it. But what's interesting about this is depending on how many times you dip your nasty little sausages into the almond bowl, you can see it gradually decreasing the more you go back and get some. A similar impressive detail can be seen in this next clip where if you get a drink at the bar or even just anywhere in general, you can actually see Arthur's Adam's apple move in between gulps. <coughs> Next is if you're out riding out in Roanoke Ridge, some of the Murphy gang might actually set up an ambush to lure you in to their campsite so that way they can rob or try to kill you. Hands up! <laughs> you trying to rob a sick man? I was trying to help. Bullshit you was. <laughs> you move and I'll shoot you. What I found interesting about this particular encounter though is that he uses the excuse of having smallpox in order to lure, lure you in, excuse me, for help. Even though it was just a farce all to begin with, it actually looks like he does have some kind of skin condition. Now I'm no expert or a doctor or anything, so I am no way diagnosing exactly what this condition is, but it appears to me like he really does have the smallpox. And this next detail is going to frustrate a lot of original fans of the first Red Dead Redemption and John Marston in seeing that the character model we got for him in the epilogue is something less than desirable. Especially his hairstyle. It's nothing completely like what he had in the first game or even the actual story of Red Dead Redemption 2. So why Rockstar completely decided to go with Arthur's character model instead of just actually making John's? It's a pretty bitter disappointment, and this cutscene here, along with many other examples shown throughout the game, prove that John was originally supposed to have his classic hairstyle. In his own fashion. Charles Smith has also appeared, and is unsurprisingly a pillar of strength. Together, 
We've built you a home. I hope soon to show it to you. I miss you and the boy more than I can express. Please, come back to me. Yours always, John. While concluding the mission A Rage Unleashed, in Chapter 6 you can actually see Dutch and Eagle Flies having a small conversation while Arthur and the others return the horses ashore. And here you can actually hear Dutch influencing Eagle Fly's mind just the same way he did to Arthur and the rest of the gang to get them to do what he says. Even going so far to actually make fun of Arthur and being a complete a-hole right in front of him. Oh, seems like Uncle Sam likes you fellas even less than he likes us. So it goes. His mother doesn't want to fight again. Well, he is a wise man, but you know, I think that I agree with you. There's only so much treachery and betrayal that a man can take before he must admit to himself that he is no longer a man. Never thought about it in those terms. <laughs> An old friend of Evelyn Miller like you, I doubt that. You know, I never had a son. Your father must be a great man. He raised you. Thank you. Gentlemen, so what's next? Also during this part, you'll be given the option to help or refuse to help Rain's fall at the request of Charles in order to stop Dutch from influencing Eagle Fly's mind any further. Depending on which option you choose, you can actually have that mission and a slight bit of dialogue and a slight bit of alternate dialogue with Charles immediately following your response. There's not really too big a difference, so I won't show exactly what happens if you refuse to help him, but after helping him on the way back to camp, or if you just go out riding, you may see him on the trail, in which if you approach him, you can have a small piece of dialogue that actually pertains to the mission that just happened. Would you talk to him? Speak with Rageful. Yes. Would you? Sure. I'll speak with him. You head on back to camp, check on the others, Dutch's behavior. It's... I understand. Thank you, Arthur. How you doing? Been thinking more about Dutch and Eagle Flies. It can only end badly. Now, there's only so much we can do about it. And lastly, after John and Uncle find Charles and Sandini, you can actually have this long conversation with him all the way to the docks to pick up his baggage. Normally, however, in this particular clip, around the halfway point is where the dialogue will normally cut off. But if you try to make John walk a little bit slower, you can hear the full dialogue all the way from start to finish, and it'll be John and Charles reminiscing about their time in the gang, what their goals and ambitions were, and discussing future plans with John and his family at Beecher's Hope. Found, we'd have. Oh, of course. I understand. He's where he would have wanted to be. A pretty hillside, facing the evening sun. He gave me his satchel. Well, some of that journal he always drew in. I got it. I'm a bit of a draftsman myself nowadays. Well, he wasn't a good man. None of us were. But uh, maybe he was true to himself. Him and his code. <laughs> that pig-headed bastard. You get sick like that, I guess you... You gotta cling to something. He was hoping to come out of it. Hope was about all he had left. Maybe all any of us have. Hmm. Anyway, I heard all of you were dead. Or I might have come looking. And me, the same about you. Dutch? Who knows? Dead? Maybe? I'm not sure. I heard all kind of things, but one thing I know, he ain't around here. I ain't heard nothing real in years since, well, that time. Nor me. Micah. I hope that bastard's dead. You know, he was the one speaking to them agents. What? Putting them on us the whole time. Or since before I got off Sisica. They picked up Strauss. The agents made a real mess of him. I heard he died in custody. I never said a word. <sighs> Guess some folk is strong in ways you can't see. Everything that happened 
All those deaths. Micah? None of us is innocent in that. Dutch, least of all. But I don't think we would have had to let mayhem if it wasn't for... We were on a very bad path. And Micah Bell dragged us into the abyss. Mm. Never ends well. Gangs like ours don't ride off into the sunset. Not these days. Maybe Arthur's sunset's the best we can hope for. I actually believed it, you know? Once, the original plan, that we'd have a ranch one day. Horses, cattle, big noisy dinners. All of us living free and honest. Funny you should say that. That's what I'm hoping for this place in the high country. Only, it's just me and Uncle at the moment. And maybe Abigail and Jack, if they'll take me back. And the ranch is... <laughs> well, wait till you see the ranch. I'll let you decide what you think. I think it's mighty fine. Or has the potential to be. <laughs> You're a lucky man, John. I always thought you might be. I hope you'll stay with us. I will. For a while. Okay. Where's your bag? Over there. It's where I left it. Okay. Wake him up a little! Forgiveness? There's some folks who don't deserve it.